Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my channel and today in this video, we are going to look at a few new features that I have added to my blog. So the first one out of them is I saw one small little problem where my slug was getting edited when I was making any change to the title. Okay, I'll show you the code. Previously, I had something like this set function would um, pa, 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 pa. right it was something like this so what happens is right now this is my blog one if i change the title okay it changes the slug now that basically means that if this slug was being shared on social media let's say twitter facebook or some place and then if i change the title back to something else my slug got updated and the problem that I see is it will get a 404. So to stop that problem, what I have done is let me undo and show you. So I'm only setting the slug if it is a create event. If it is not a create, then it's obviously an edit. And at that point, I'm not changing the slug. At least this gives me the assurance that I won't get 404s if I change my title because I may choose to change the title you know the hook statements uh, can generally change a bit okay so that is one first thing that I have done which results in the slug to be constant then the next thing that I added to my blog was this category I have shown you that I have two um, types of categories on my blogs which is whether they are web or they are travel so i created this entire section called categories i now have the ability to easily create a new one but how was it done well the first thing is obviously create category table let's see what we have over here it's a straightforward table with only one column which is name let's open up the model as well so the model has one fillable property called name uh, that's pretty straightforward and I'm setting up a relationship. Let me add the return type. So the return type here is a belongs to relationship. So a category belongs to a blog and similarly a blog has a category. Okay. And I have obviously added that uh, field over here because create blog has a new field called foreign ID for which is referencing the category model and this is indexed because there is going to be a page which will list the articles or the blog posts based on web and one which is based on travel so there's a where condition applied to the blog post so if you look at the table what will happen is i have a category column over here so if this is not indexed i'm not going to get a good performance when the data increases so it is a good idea to index it all right and obviously the published is indexed because that's one more where condition where you know which will run for every query so yeah the model is kind of set you know we have a blog we have a category now how are we getting this where is the browser um let me go to the blog do i edit maybe so can you see this travel ui web right if i change everything anything sorry right it does update itself and it will update over here as well right so how am i doing this so first of all to show this drop down the select list in the form here let's understand what we have done so blog resource let's open that up so we have a form the group is here section blog content everything is fine this is where we have our first section so we have the is published toggle and stuff you know the created ad updated ad all those are taken over here and then we have a select list so the select list is controlling the category id and now every select list need to have an options and the options is coming through this relationship field so this relationship method takes one at parameter which is the name so we need to tell the name of the relationship 
and we need to tell what field from that relationship we need to show in the drop down it will expect the id to be taken but at least the name is something which we need to do I, if i do a created ad right suddenly the drop down changes right so that's where you know the second parameter comes into picture if you have specific values that you want to pick for the drop down all right so this is done and then i'm showing that same category over here in the table by adding a column over here text column which is category dot name i can even do category dot id and it will show over here so any property in there can be we can do a dot notation to define the property that we are interested to show and one more small tweak that i have done is let me show you the blog table i have added a string field called preview image i already have uploaded most of the images on s3 and there is a cdn to it i do my compression manually so i wanted to have a very simple option of a preview image over here and that's about it i will see if i can you know customize the form so that i can use this image to show a preview over here just to make it a little easier to understand but right now the entry point is basically an image url uh, i'm not doing an upload over here i'm keeping things a bit simple over right now now the next um, interesting thing over here is this filter right this filter allows me to look for any article which is from any of this category so if i click on ui it obviously filters it down to all the blog posts which are from ui right and you know what i would also need the id it just gives me a sense of how many articles i have so maybe i'll just add that as well okay mm it has a label property if i'm not wrong right so i'm able to filter how am i doing that well in the filters i have a select filter for category that is the relationship that i'm filtering on and this is the name and the attribute on which we are doing the filter basically it is defining what is the um where condition which field you want the where condition to be and what it eventually does is if you see table filters this is the category and then the value is 3 okay basically that's the id which is being used and the name is being shown over here sorry not there but over here if i do something like created ad again the field changes and the value is still the id can you see that right so that's where this thing comes into picture the filter is working now all right what else the next thing and it's an important one is this tags now this is a spatty package um let me show you spatty tag input so basically there is a so basically there is a plugin for filament which is spatty tags it allows us to basically install a composer package which allows us to use this component and it basically uses the spatty package which is laravel tags i'll show you that as well this is the original spatty package and you know this thing is a filament wrapper on top of that package so it allows you to basically um I'll show. so whatever is your model we have blog right so in that blog model i have added this has tags trait with this has tag has tag trait and the migrations which i get which is this i have a json column called name 
a JSON column called slug, a string for type, and an integer order column. With this, what happens is I'm able to add these tags. Where is it? Over here, right? And let me show you the table. So this is the tags. It has language support, so that's the reason it is a JSON object. And I have EN over here, Laravel. They have a slug as well, right? So these things are uh, managed by the you know, plugin of Element. It's a very useful package. It's very straightforward to implement. And yeah, uh, how it saves the information is, so the tag ID is this, and then the taggable type and the taggable ID. So it's the polymorphic, I think it's called polymorphic relationship where basically where you have taggables and imageables kind of the relationship and you put the bottle in here and the ID. So this tag can be used right now. We are using it for blog, but I can use it for comments as well or you know, for images as well. So the model changes. That's the advantage of this particular format. So yeah, um, that's pretty much what I have covered as new features. And I would say right now it is pretty much there um, in terms of the functionality. The only thing which I can see right now is the sorting list is wrong. I mean, the second post should be on top. Mm which I can basically write in here. How do I do that? Let me see. I'll need to look at the documentation. I am not able to recognize what that function would do. Get table query. In the widget class, you know, the get page table query. This is the panel builder. So I'm not looking for that. Let's see. The base method returns the query. Okay. And so if I do order by descending ID, it should work, isn't it? Right, it did. So yeah, that's how we can change the um, sequence. Basically what happens is this is the listing page. A listing page is basically a class inside our filaments, resources, blog resources pages right and if you look at the list records the sorry what is that get table query right so this is this function which is responsible for getting the data from the database and showing it on the page right so the list blogs extend the list records and what I can do is I can override the parent function. Okay. And I can have my own conditions. So what I did, whatever was coming from the parent method of the list records, right? I took that because I understood that it is returning a query. It's a builder query. And that's the reason even if we see over here, we get the builder object and we are adding one more builder condition to it, which is the order by, right? And that takes care of things. So yeah, that's about it, guys. That's pretty much what I wanted to do. Maybe a few small things here and there I will add. But um, other than that, yeah, I mean, it's pretty much there. What I will do is I will write a script to basically migrate all my blogs to this particular format and then I will be um, changing my front end code a little bit so that I can pull the data from these APIs and generate the blog, right? So thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, then do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.